Hello, kind sir. My name is Sean Spencer. This is my partner, Bert Indehand and De Bush. My name is not Bert Indehand. And De Bush. My name is Burton Guster, and this is my partner, Potential Spam. I'll call later. <laughs> you calling Kurt Smith? He's not gonna play your wedding, dude. I haven't decided yet, Gusta. Yes, you have. Have you learned Song Song yet? Hello? Today is all about Gus and his soon-to-be wife, who's leading a double life that has something to do with that gun we found. Also, we finally are on to the husband. She's married? Try and keep up. Gus is losing hope and feeling slightly incontinent. Most of that is true. What is her name? You don't know your fiance's name. Not her real one, no. It's not Prince, is it? Ignore him. It's not Prince, is it? How old do you think we are? Younger than James Bader when he did Pretty in Pink and McCarthy. Will you kindly suck it? You suck it. You suck it. You suck it. You flame suck it. How dare you? I'm back. Drink it in. Gee, this is a big deal. How fast can we drive? As fast as we want. I'll be honest. I didn't think we'd have to take our pants off for this. I didn't ask you to. Well observed. Do you have the peacock? What's that? It's a streaming service. There's so many streamers. You know what she's talking about? No, she's making that up. A, B, N. It's headphones sale! What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host, as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you my next review in the Psych franchise, notably Psych 3, This Is Gus, which was released to the Peacock streaming service on November 18th. So as a bit of background to stream the show, as of this recording, you do need to be on one of the pay tiers, either the base $4.99 plan or the um, more ad-free version at $9.99. Um, the standard version does, I guess, have more ads. The um, higher tier, they say, is mostly ad-free in that most of their ads are there, but if there's a partner ad that they're unable to remove is there, then you will see a few ads in that case. So when I did go in to stream the show for myself, um, it did have a... Um, ad to watch or some ads to watch in the beginning and then it was ad free for the rest of the movie so that was great um, news there and it was a similar thing with the other two psych movies when I did stream them on Peacock as well so you know there was an ad at the beginning and then ad free for the rest of it um, so with that out of the way um, overall if you've watched any of the psych TV shows or the other two films or even the musical you kind of know what you're getting into for this version of the film so you have a crime that needs to be solved you have Sean and Gus's antics um, you have a little bit of friction with Lassiter and hiding stuff from Juliet and then the chief not wanting to do things uh, Sean's dad getting roped into stuff so all in all um, this was a good movie um, very little of it's going to make sense or you're not going to be able to follow a lot of the story if you've not seen Psych 2 Lassie Come Home um, Psych 1 doesn't really factor into it it's more of a standalone well actually I will say I take that back um I believe it's in Psych 1 when we get the um, costume that Sean uses in Psych 3 as far as him looking like Rob Zombie, which is um, a good tie in, good attention to detail, and a funny thing there, especially when they meet up with a lady who thinks that Sean is actually Rob Zombie, so a bit of validation there. Um, so overall, if I, as far as continuity goes and all the various characters and all of that various sort of stuff, I give the grade a good solid grade of uh, A. Um, they keep everything as far as continuity, timeline, lore, film store, prior film stories, and all of that stuff um, in line with each other. So the trilogy of Psych films is definitely well done. And I mean, very little of it will make sense if you have not seen the TV show. So things like the importance of the super sniffer, which they continue here when um, Gus shows up at um, Sean's dad's house and validates Sean's suspicions of something going on with the baby, uh, which I like that they resolve that um, Sean's dad thinks that, he's, that Sean is having a baby with Juliet, but that doesn't, it's not, not actually theirs, it's actually related to Gus, with, which Henry also found out. Um, and it was actually Henry um, building a crib. Um, and I actually found it funny that 
Gus thought that Henry was building a wooden girlfriend, which was weird, but funny and well portrayed. Um, and of course, I like the um, modernity of it and how they're keeping with the times by having an intro to the movie um, that matches the Marvel, the MCU um, intro um, graphics that match the comic books and a music style and all that. So uh, nice attention to detail then. Um, and of course, as to complete the bit that we saw in the trailer as far as the Peacock streaming service and Sean and Gus not having heard of it and thinking that there's too many, um, they round that bit out that if they've heard of USA or the last time they watched USA Network and Sean replies with 2014. So that's a little bit of a, a deep cut there where Psych season eight ended in 2014 which as far as i remember was when psych was on usa network so that kind of makes sense and then um i don't know that psych one was available on usa or if it was maybe moved to um nbc then definitely for psych two um as far as i remember or at least it was in, on nbc at some point but um I like that bit of connection there that 2014 was the last time that site was on USA and that's when the um, the last time as far as I could tell the show was um, there as well. Um, and then to round it out, of course they're going to make a Val Kilmer reference to one of his movies uh, to try and figure out um, what... I, now I'm already drawing a blank on the joke there, but... They, of course, are going to have a Val Kilmer movie reference, so I like that little bit of touch. Um, the only thing that I kind of missed as far as I couldn't tell if there was a connection was anything related to Emilio Estevez. Um, and I didn't catch uh, Sean using Emilio Estevez Estevez, so I was kind of bummed out about that, so maybe it'll require another rewatch. Um, and, of course, this time around, the main character that was missing was Woody. He was basically at home, so I'm not sure if that's maybe a, um, uh, because of COVID or if there's something else going on with him there. I didn't really try and break the fourth wall there to, um, see if there was a reason for him not being there, but it was good to see, um, T Lassiter up and in action. It was a limited bit, but it was, a, it was just, it was basically nice to, um, have that bit of um, tie, or at least good to see him up and running. It looks like his recovery is going well, and um, basically just nice to have him back on the show and back interacting with all the characters. Um, now, as far as that, by the ending of the film, it left me wondering if they're going to make a psych four, uh, notably with um, whatever happened to. Uh, or basically to f have a follow-up story with Sean and Juliet having a baby because I kind of felt like the chick in the bucket or I guess the baby in the bucket that they brought they continued that story that they're not gonna they're, they agree not to have kids but it sounds like it's more up in the air as far as um, that Juliet still wants to have a kid and Sean is up in the air and he's not gonna grow up to be mature enough to have one but it sounds like he was gonna change his mind so I guess the next growth spurt for him is going to be to change his mind and agree to have the kid and because his dad wants to wants a grandkid i guess so we'll see if they decide to do a, a, a sci four where they deal with um sean and juliet having a kid which would be the main reason to have the next film um and then also deal with the trial of woody as far as um his abilities and medical practice issues and all of that stuff so I was thinking while watching the film and especially after the baby discussion with Juliet and Sean and then the whole thing with Woody and Chief Vic as far as his, tri as his trial that um, this the, if they do do a Psych 4 that it would pick up right after the events of Psych 3 and um, deal with getting Woody free, picking up cases or picking up his case to, to help defend him like they did with the guy on the TV show from the law firm or hiring him and then becoming his consultants again. And I think it was from season one. I forget the guy's name offhand now, but um, at least having him helping or having that guy and helping Woody to um, prove his innocence and having a 
case to pick up from there as well. So that's all there is for this review. So grading the film overall, I want to give it an A, but it's also a tentative A because it does require watching the first two films, uh, notably the second one to um, understand the whole thing with the baby and Gus and the girlfriend with um, with uh, with her and then getting married and all of that and then the first film to have the whole outfit that Sean wears in this one to be Rob Zombie. Uh, watching the show, the main thing to, that's a takeaway from there is the whole thing with Kurt Smith and the music and then the priest from the church that they go they rely on as far as the exorcisms and all of that and then of course the season finale to have Val Kilmer as Dobson and then the continued jokes that they've made there as a through line for that. Um, so that's all there is for this particular review so if you have any questions comments feedback or anything like that or what you liked or disliked about the show or the, sorry, the movie, then you can find comment on this post on Twitter at Patel N01. The website is headphonesneal.reviews um, for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. And of course, if you are a supporter on Patreon at patreon.com slash Patel N01, then this week you get a um, beta episode for a pro special project that I am testing out. So um, when that shows up on your feed um, as a patron, you'll be able to, or once you support the show and get that, um, get it on your feed, you'll be able to come comment and provide your feedback on that as well. So again, that's patreon.com slash Patel in zero one. Um, and of course, I'll round it out with the, you're not going to have a psych episode or TV or movie without Sean coming up with a ridiculous name. So of course, this and it's not a spoiler because it's in the trailer as far as bird in the hand and a bush and then the whole thing with the um, spam caller. Um, they do have a couple of other ones in there, but the, the initial one is the funniest of the bunch. So that's all there is for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in and until next time.